Okay, here we go. What is this treat called again? Well, I call it sunshine lemon bars, but they're lemon bars. Lemon bars. Because these are just remind me of bringing in a little sunshine all the time. And it <laughs> yeah. doesn't, you know, you don't have to just do it in spring and summer, but anytime. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're going to walk us through this? Send yeah, us let, let, let's do this. Hi, this is Amy, Amy Roloff. So welcome to my little kitchen. Thanks for joining me again. Um, well, today is gonna be a really fun day, at least for me. I am going to be cooking with my son, Jacob, and his wife, my daughter-in-law, Isabel. They're not gonna be in my kitchen, but we're gonna do it Zoom. So I'm really looking forward to that. And one of the things that I'm making right now are lemon bars. I'm calling them sunshine lemon bars because that's what this reminds me of. It's like bringing in a little bit of sunshine, of freshness, of brightness, of um, just, I don't know, fun. And so um, it's in the middle of winter. It's in January. It is kind of like cold outside. And I don't know, lemon bars just are fresh and citrusy and and sparkle and stuff like that. So I am making lemon bars. Uh, I think Jacob's gonna look forward to that, but I'm making this ahead of time so that I can, you know, do the Zoom video a lot smoother and better, I hope. So anyway, I am zesting three lemons right now and it smells so, so good. But I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of my ingredients together so that that way I can move a little quicker for you here. But anyway, and I love this bar because I love a short, um, a shortbread cookie crust and that is phenomenal. So hopefully this will work. Okay, I think I've got all my stuff together. Let me get this lemon over here. <clears throat> so I am making lemon bars right now. I know it seems kind of funny in the middle of winter to be making lemon bars, but um, I don't know, I'm calling them sunshine lemon bars because that's what it reminds me of, bringing a little bit of sunshine any time of the year. So I squeezed, that's lemon juice, fresh lemon juice. I think it's best to use fresh lemons, but I think you'll be okay if you use good quality lemon juice, you know, that comes in a bottle. Um, but this is kind of like a big lemon and I think I had four or five lemons in this to make one cup, just slightly over one cup of lemon juice. Then I have the zest of three lemons. And what I did with this one, cause I didn't want like, you know, when you zest it, you have like the long string or whatever of the zest. <clears throat> so when I zested it, I went ahead and chopped it up so that there are little specks of lemon instead of, you know, longer pieces. I've got my big bowl here. Um, so what we're gonna do first is make the crust. We're gonna cook the crust a little bit so it gets set and just slightly golden brown. So why don't we get that going? So I have two and a half cups of flour. <clears throat> I am going to um, <clears throat> put that in a big bowl. I have What is this? Oh, uh, two thirds cups of powdered sugar. Oops, kind of splattered over here. Where's my salt? And then I have salt. And then let me read my direction because I want to make sure <clears throat> I get this right. And um, so yeah, where's my vanilla? I'm gonna. But first of all, I am going to stir this all together. So I've got my flour, salt, and powdered sugar in here. So two and a half cups of flour, two thirds cup of powdered sugar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. <clears throat> so we're making basically a shortbread crust, and I love shortbread cookies. 
I, I haven't made this in a very long time, so that's why I had to go back to read my directions because I really want to get this right. I get so nervous sometimes when it comes to baking to make sure I get everything right. And so I got that going. So I'm going to add just about a half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm just going to eyeball it there. And then I have one cup of softened butter. Not exactly room temperature, but soft. I have melted down there and I'm like, no, no. I've never made shortbread cookie with melted butter. So here we go. It's just really soft. A little bit is melted. I'm gonna make sure I get all the butter here. See, cause you know, there's a lot of butter left in there. Here we go. I'm gonna stir that all around. So we get it all combined and I'm able to press it into the pan, into a baking dish. I mean, you can basically use any baking dish, but I think glass baking dish works better because the heat and it won't brown or it won't cook the outside and not the inside. I just think it evenly cooks a little better for this type of cookie. I tell you, I love the smell of the zest and the um, and the lemon juice. So I'm hoping that Jacob likes this. Isabel told me, and I didn't know this really, because you know, as kids, who likes lemon bars? They like chocolate chip cookies or brownies or peanut butter or snickerdoodles, you know, that kind of thing. Some more cookies, Christmas cookies with icing. So anyway, Isabel told me that, yeah, uh, Jacob was looking forward to the lemon bars. So that's why I'm gonna make it ahead of time so that when I'm on the Zoom call with them, um, it can go a little faster and, you know, you kind of have the finished product. Okay, I think that is all mixed in. I think because there's so much butter in here, I am not going to grease my baking dish. I think it'll be all good. So I'm gonna just pour this in here. And if there's anything that I did not thoroughly mix in, this will be my chance to do that. Cause I see some little, just a little bit of flour that didn't get quite mixed in. Then you just kind of want to even it out before you start pressing it down. Okay. So I'm gonna gently press it down. This is all gonna to come together. Oh, I love shortbread cookie. And I love it when they turn out and that they don't break apart when you cut them. And if my shortbread cookies come uh, break apart when I cook them, that means I cooked them too long. Cause I like making like little stick or uh, circles. I guess you can in shortbread, but little stick shortbread cookies and dipping them in chocolate. Okay, I think that's good. I preheated my oven to 350 degrees. And you know what, if I lack a little energy right now, it's because it's like 6.37 in the morning. <laughs> Crazy. Anyway, uh, pre uh, I uh, the temperature of my oven is 350 degrees. I will cook these maybe for about 20, 25 minutes, depending, but just until it turns, just begins to turn a light golden brown. You don't want it like brown. Just beginning to turn a light golden brown. So here we go. And so while that is baking, we'll go ahead and get some of the, um, like the lemon curd, the thing that makes lemon bars, lemon bars. <laughs> okay, for the kind of like the lemon curd part of the lemon bars, I have the zest of three lemons. I have about a little, just slightly over one cup of lemon juice, and that can take anywhere from four or five 
maybe six lemons, but it really all depends on the size of lemon. Like I use this size. This was pretty large. I was amazed. And um, I know sometimes lemons may not be in season, but I think for us in the wintertime they are because of the harvest, you know, of oranges, grapefruits, limes, lemons, and all that other stuff. But anyway, um, if you can't really, if lemons are too expensive and you really can't find fresh lemon, just buy a few in order to at least get the lemon zest and just get really good quality lemon juice at the store. Um, but I went ahead and used fresh lemon juice. And so this is it. And I have uh, two and a half cups of sugar, like I said before. And then I think that is about it. Is that about it? Yes, wait, where's my flour? I only have about four tablespoons of flour because that'll kind of combine it and hold it together as well. And be kind of like the thickening agent. So let's get our sugar in here. We're gonna put our lemon zest in here so it gets all incorporated evenly, the best it can. And because lemons can maybe be a little expensive, I'm gonna make sure I get every little piece of lemon zest. And like I mentioned before, I went ahead and kind of chopped the zest up. I know it might sound a little funny, but instead of getting the long pieces of the zest when you, you know, grate it on your zester, I just kind of hoping to have just like little flakes. I'm just gonna kind of really make sure that the lemon zest isn't clumped, but really just kind of incorporate it in the sugar here. Okay, the big part is gonna be all the eggs. Let's see here, um, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and add the flour because the flour will be incorporated in the sugar better if I do it now instead of after. Okay. Okay, here we go, people. Eight eggs. I'm gonna do it in a little bowl so that I don't get shells. Okay, that's one. Two. Three. Four. This will be kind of fun to, um, I'm not sure if I'll trust my grandkids cracking eggs but to have kind of a counting thing going on here. How many is that? One, two, three, four. If you lose count, guess what? Just count the yolks. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Seven. Eight eggs. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put the timer on my crust. I'm gonna take a quick, a quick look. Oh no, it's got a little bit more to go. And so you wanna get a good fork for this. At least to break up the yolk. So do I have one in here? Oh, I already have one in here. Just to break up the yolks. And I think this will be a lot harder to do if you use a whisk because there's so much sugar. Oh yeah, Chris just got up. I told him I was here um, 6.30, about 6.30 or something in the morning. We're Saturday, we're supposed to be sleeping in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to get this done before I did the Zoom with, you know, okay. Jacob and Izzy. Well, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee and let you add it. Okay. But you like lemon bars, right? I love lemon bars, yes. Looking forward to it. Didn't you have a recipe? No, those were lemon shortbread cookies. Oh. I'm going to have to. 
Babe, I'm gonna have to try that. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try and whip this up, get this really incorporated, and then add in my lemon juice. Okay. This is where you may want your whisk instead of using a fork. And you know what? I'm gonna get this little itty bitty stool here so I'm up higher. You know what, I think I may have, I think what I'm gonna decide to do is put the lemon juice in first and then the yolks or the eggs. So I'm just gonna really whisk this up really good just to make sure all the yolks and the eggs are broken up and incorporated in the sugar mixture really, really well. And this will be all ready set to go for when my crust comes out. Now, I don't wanna put this on the really hot crust. Um, I'm gonna wait till the crust cools down just a little bit, but it's okay to put it on warm if the crust is still warm. I hope Isabella and Jacob will get a chance to make these. I think they're gonna really like them. Boy, I think I need to do some more workout in my arms. Okay, there we go. Okay, I just took the crust uh, for the lemon bars out of the oven, and this is what it looks like. So if you see some of those brown little specks, I think what happened was when I put the uh, vanilla in, uh, the sugar, it kind of, you know, blended in with the sugar. So I think what I would do when you're making the crust is to um, add in the flour, the salt, and uh, the butter, and then incorporate maybe the, uh, the vanilla. But regardless, it's still gonna come out great, and or uh, use a better fork or whisk it a little bit better. So it's dispersed, but anyway, those little brown specks for vanilla. So I think the crust is cool when you can definitely hold the pan and your hands don't burn except for maybe the bottom. So I think this is all ready, set to go. And see how it's just slightly light brown around the edges? Because if I waited till the center got that color, the outer part would be just dry shortbread and not that kind of moist, but with a little crunch to it. So anyway, I think this is ready to go. I'm gonna give this, the lemon curd here, a little stir so it gets all mixed in. And we are going to put this into the oven for about another 20 minutes, just until the lemon curd is set. Like I said, I haven't made this in a long time. I really just wanted to see my little notes, my lemon bar notes. Anyway, um, yes, for about 20, 25 minutes. And then you should at least let it cool for about an hour. I might not have all that time. because I want to um, have these all done by the time I do the Zoom. Like I said, man, if you got stuff in here, look at that lemon zest. Gonna get a spoon here. Get all of that goodness out of here. There we go. So I'm gonna gently carry this over to the oven so it doesn't like rock all over the place. And I've got lemon stuff flying all over the place. So let me open up my oven door. So like I said, I'm gonna cook this for about 20 to 25 minutes. Check it at 20, depending on your oven and just see, you want it set. You wanna maybe stick a, a toothpick in there and not have any of the lemon curd, you know, stick to it. So here we go, gently. Okay, here we go. Good luck. Lemon curd, or no, 
sunshine lemon bars are in the oven. And so hopefully they'll be done in about 20, 25 minutes and we'll see how they are. Well, I just took the lemon curd out of the oven to cool and look at that. You can see some of the uh, zest in there, the little specks of lemon zest, which I think is pretty cool. Anyway, um, I'm hoping this turned out okay. And I'm hoping it cooled enough in time for when I do the Zoom cooking with Jacob and Isabel so that I can show them. Anyway, um, anyway, sunshine lemon bars because it reminds me of sunshine. And I just realized I did not have an apron on during this whole thing until now. So I really wanted to show you this apron. I got this at a craft show, I believe, and she made these aprons out of old vintage tablecloths, which I thought was really, really cool. So anyway, you know me, I love my aprons. So Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen, you can find this recipe and all of the other recipes and videos over at amyroloffslittlekitchen.com or please go to my YouTube channel and um, either watch them there or subscribe or whatever. It's gonna be a little bit more than just cooking and recipes. You'll uh, see the live events and other things. Anyway, that's for another thing. But Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen, thank you so much for joining me, but I'll be back when this is fully cooled. I did not put powdered sugar on it yet because the powdered sugar would just melt into the bars because it's still warm. So anyway, thanks for joining me in my little kitchen. I so appreciate it. Until then, see you in a little bit. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are enjoying it and I would really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribed to it. And oh, don't forget to click that little bell up there and you'll be notified of future videos that are new and coming on my YouTube channel. So thank you so much for that. And I would really appreciate it if you shared the video and let other people know and encourage them to subscribe and like the videos as well. So anyway, thank you and back to the video. Okay. Yeah, I'm too tall. Okay, hi guys. Hey. How are you doing? Good. Good. Hey Izzy, I love I love the apron you're wearing because that was one of the aprons we had on um, at Amy Roloff's little kitchen. I know I love the colors. My favorite. Oh, good. I love it too. I hope I still have mine. Um, you know this apron that I'm wearing? Yeah. I bought it at a uh, a craft store, and this woman took old vintage tablecloths and made them into aprons. Brilliant. I thought, oh, I need one. You know me. How many oh, aprons what? do I have? Yeah, no, I was like, I'm surprised you didn't get a few. Yeah. Well, um, thank you for wanting to cook with your mom and mother-in-law. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, I was thinking though, when you guys were living with me for, you know, a couple of years, I don't think we ever really cooked together. Like I made something and you guys made something for yourself because you guys, I mean, Jacob has uh, grown into being vegetarian or vegan or whatever. And obviously you were more into that. Yeah. And, um, but I can't believe we never cooked together. Yeah, we, we call it flexitarian now because we kind of, we kind of, I mean, she's more, she doesn't eat any meat at all, but I, I eat some turkey nowadays, you know, so we're flexitarian. Yeah, like once in a while. Yeah, but most yeah. of the meals or any meal I cook. Generally everything's going to be, like we use vegetarian. vegetable broth and stuff like that. But yeah, yeah. yeah that was probably why. I'm just yeah. Dietary. So, okay, lemon bars, you guys. Oh. Normally I would put these in the refrigerator, but I think they're cool. These are lemon bars, but we're going to make them. And where's my powdered sugar? Oh, here's my powdered sugar. I'm going to sprinkle them. I think this little thing was for tea, but oh, I tell you, it's a great. So uh, Amy, one thing I will ask about the lemon bars, if we don't have a zester, what do you suggest we do to get the lemon zest? Um, I was going to say a peeler, you know, like a peeler, but you want to make sure you don't peel too thick. 
The other thing is when you do peel it, chop it up. You'll chop it up as fine as you can. So there's different varieties of peelers, but I will try it on the lemons here. Um, well, you know what? Oh, your birthday's coming up. I'm getting you a zester. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm getting you a zester. Okay. Do you have one of these things too? Hang on. We don't have a lot. Do you have this? No. For garlic? Okay, I'm getting, no, this is for lemon or limes if you want the juice. No, I cheated and I got lemon juice because we don't have one of those. Well, um, I think that's fine. Just, you know, make sure you kind of get good quality. Yeah. Um, I like fresh lemons for this, but sometimes yeah. if they're not in season, they can be expensive. So I think lemon juice is fine. Okay. But I like this for me because I don't have the big hands that the strength to squeeze them. So I love this. So I'm getting you one of these and a zester then. Thank you. Because not that uh, a young woman turning 25, that's one of her favorite gifts to get. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, I put a little bit of powdered sugar on here. Sorry, you guys, I'm going to slice this up because I want to taste them. It's better if you cool them down a little bit more. Good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hang on here. I hope I cooked these long enough. Yeah, I need a little scooper. All right, tool for the right job. I mean, if you're as a professional cooker as she is, yeah. you have a I don't know if I am, but I have fun. Okay, here we go. Doesn't matter. What is this treat called again? Well, I call it sunshine lemon bars, but they're lemon bars. Lemon bars. Because these are, just remind me of bringing in a little sunshine all the time. And it <laughs> yeah. doesn't, you know, you don't have to just do it in spring and summer, but anytime. So. Mm hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. So you're gonna walk us through this? Send yeah. Us let, let, let's do this. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Oh. We have measuring. Remember, you are the measure. Okay. <laughs> um, for you guys, if you're using lemon juice, just do uh, the one cup of lemon. I already zested my uh, lemons already. But let me try it because I do have to do one more. Let me just try it lightly with this. We need a mix. So. Just go as thin as you can peel in your lemon because you don't want a lot of the white stuff. The white stuff is a little bitter. And I'll show you. Is there any way I could do that with just a knife? Knife? Well, you can, but see, I don't know if you can see it. Right. See this? There's no white on yeah. this lemon peel, so you get more of the lemon flavor. But if you get too much of the white stuff, that is more bitter. Oh yeah, see, yeah, you can do it with a lemon peel if you don't have a zester. And then what I would do is just kind of chop it up. Chop it, mince it up as much as you can. You, you watch her. Work. I like the little flakes of the zest in the lemon bars. Yeah, heck yeah. It just adds a little more lemon flavor as well. Like this, these flakes? Yeah, mints. You know, mints? Tiny little pieces. Oh. Yeah, see, like, um, hang on, let me get a dish. No, but like, you, you, you cut them and then you mince them. See? Just little pieces. Yeah. And they will be a little thicker than if you zested it, so you might have a little more crunch to your lemon bars. 
Oh, babe, you want to taste this? Say hi to everyone. Here, you want to sit hi, down? everyone. Yes, no. Hi, Chris. Hi, guys. So we made, um, there's your lunch right over there. I just made that. Oh. So if you wanted to get it. <laughs> He's tolerating a dish without meat. It was actually, it was very good. We had it for dinner last night. I even had a second, so it was, it was very okay. good. I, mean, I like this one much better because I sliced the mushrooms instead of quartering them. Mm -hmm. It just made, I don't know, it's just better. Mm -hmm. And I think when you saute the mushrooms and brown them, you can brown them better than if you were to quarter your mushrooms. You want to taste this? Yes, that's why I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> here, well, here, you take it. Uh, have the whole thing. Because we're going to have a lot of it. Mm. I didn't put it, I didn't cool them yet, so that's why they're still a little warm and soft. I'm glad it's a little tart and not too sweet. Yeah. I like the tartness. Very good. Yeah, I don't like to eat things too sweet either. Yeah. Even though I'm a sweet person. No, <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> no, this is very good. Okay, good. Well, thanks, babe. I'm out of here. Oh, are you? I've got chores to do. Like here I'm or? I'm going shopping. I've got to go, oh. go to U-Haul and go do some shopping. Get ready for the Super Bowl stuff. So anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Good to see you. Bye. He shows up briefly in my videos, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Okay, so um, did you zest up some stuff? Uh, yeah, I'm just finishing now. Okay. It's just taking longer because I have to do the night. No, no. It's, it's keep, keep working. I'm just going to keep talking because I know you guys got to get going here. Um, Let's see. Oh, where are my glasses? Oh boy. Let's do the crust. Okay. Because you'll have to bake the crust. I left, or I shouldn't say I left. Jeremy and Audrey didn't give me back my other glass baking dish. I think making the lemon bars in a glass baking dish is better than making it in something like this. But if that's all you have, then that's all you have. You just may have to watch it a little bit because it may cook too quick. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, no bare bones materials here. So I have, um, here we go. Oh, a bowl for this. I have my butter. How much butter did I say I needed? Oh, one cup of unsalted butter. I am going to heat this up just a little bit. I don't want fully melted butter, even though I said it here, I'm gonna change that on my recipe. I think you just need very soft butter for the shortbread. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna do a little bit of salt. Add your salt in there. Your powdered sugar, which is what? Two and two thirds, no, two thirds cups of powdered sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt. The only reason I'm scraping it is because I think the bottom of my dish had a water in it. <laughs> So basically what we're making is a shortbread cookie here. Okay, can you say the measurements again? Yes, you want two and a half cups of flour. Two of these. Yeah. I'm using chickpea flour. Oh, wow, okay. You know what, you'll have to let me know like how that comes out. If it's very similar to flour, the same as flour. Because I think when you, do other things without flour, it does change the dynamics and you just have to make those adjustments for it. So yeah, two and a half cups of flour, two thirds cup of powdered sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. Then you want softened butter I'm not going to say runny. Okay. So I don't think you need runny. I've never made shortbread cookies with runny butter, with melted butter. It's just very soft. Two thirds cup powdered sugar in, goes in the crust. 
into the flower thing, yes. Because if not, then you have a very, basically you're having biscuits where the powdered sugar sweetens it up a little bit. Okay, two thirds? Yeah, two thirds cup of powdered sugar. And then one cup of, I prefer unsalted butter because that way you can adjust your salt to what you want. But if you use salted butter, that's fine too. Get a spoon here. Where are you guys at? Uh, we just got the uh, powdered sugar in there. And now we're doing a pinch of salt. salt. And then- You know what, I am going to get a bigger thing, hang on. How much sugar do we add? Two thirds cup of powdered sugar. No, but- do you use just regular cane sugar? No, I use powdered sugar. I think it's, did I not say? Yeah, powdered sugar. Do yeah. you not have powdered sugar? But yeah, we use powdered sugar. I just sugar. wasn't sure if you also did just cane sugar too. Uh, the other sugar is for the lemon curd part of it. Okay. Powdered sugar is for the shortbread cookie. Perfect. So your powdered sugar, salt, and flour are mixed in. Now I'm going to, where's the vanilla? I'm going to add a little bit of vanilla to my softened butter because the reason I do that, if I'm you add it directly in the flour, it won't fully incorporate. Oh, so where did you put it? I put it in my soft butter. Oh, right. We have to soften it. And just mix it in there. Sorry, my head's cut. That way it will mix in with the flour much better than having clumps of vanilla because it adheres to the flour. And how oh, I gotta change that in my recipe too. Like a, tea, a teaspoon of vanilla? Yeah, one teaspoon. Well, I usually just pour some in. Because it's a flavoring. You know, obviously if you pour too much, you're gonna definitely have a strong vanilla flavor. But if you, you know, just wing it on salt or baking powder, that can really impact yep. your baking. So yeah, just add that to your flour. And I'm a big fan of scraping out everything. I think so many people leave too much in the bowl or your mixing bowl or whatever. And there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. And then I just use a fork and really incorporate this all together. Now, do you really like lemon bars? Izzy was telling me you really like lemon bars, Jacob. Well, I, I really like lemon, like lemon muffins, lemon, you know, Things. Lemon pound cake? Yeah. Lemon poppy seed? Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know what? I don't think I ever knew that. I knew that you liked... Um, I like lemon tarts and stuff too. Those little tart, fruit tarts. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to remember that. I think you got it. You grew into that. I don't think that was a kid thing. No, yeah. I think spice cake was you. Yeah, he loves spice cake. I haven't been able to make it yet. Well, you know what? Um, I've got to redo this spice bundt cake that I'm doing, Izzy. Um, I'll send you the recipe. Spice bundt cake? Yeah, bundt cake. Do you have a bundt pan? I don't think so. <laughs> Ooh. I'm going to send you a bundt pan. All the things. So, Mom, this butter should be at what consistency when we add the vanilla? It's, it's, it's soft. I mean, if it's if it's more like melted, that's fine, but I like it soft, meaning it's, you know, you could, you know, run your fingers through it. It's that soft, but it's not like runny, melted. Okay, that's about yeah. what we're that's, that's my preference. Or a teaspoon right there. Yeah, like a teaspoon, you know. I love shortbread cookies. 
The vanilla's in. Now we're gonna add our butter to our flour mixture. We're just like one step behind. Yeah, add your, um, we'll add the butter to the flour mixture, yep. I am going to put mine in my baking. And then when you put it in your baking pan, just spread it out as evenly as you can before you press down on it. Don't worry, no rush. These are gonna be so good. I hope they look good. I love these bars, it's been a while. And I'm not sure why I came up with it. Maybe because spring is, we're thinking about spring already. And then once you have it, what you think is evened out the flour in your baking pan, just press it down See, and firmly is... press it down because that will adhere the dough. If you don't press it down enough, then I think your dough will not be as compact and crumble when you cut it. So make sure you press it down enough. Look at Jacob go. I know. This is why he's the baker. He takes over when it comes to measurements. And well, because sometimes it's precise. Absolutely. That's why Molly is such a, a good baker, because she's more of that exact. Yeah. Yeah, we just had to warm our butter in the, in the, in the toaster. That's why we were a little behind, because we don't have a microwave. Oh, yeah. No, no worries. Still a little bit uh, cold. Did you guys ever get a mattress? Mm -hmm. well did you we found one at, at costco and we just have to go buy it but you know well, go buy it that was your housewarming christmas present yeah i know we appreciate it but i want to see it i want to see how you guys actually feel in it yeah it's it's is it okay if the butter is a little bit cold still yeah just make sure it's it's well incorporated into the flour because you right. don't want big chunks of butter yeah, I know. Oh. It's not like pie dough. Yeah, because we, it, Jacob mashed it up pretty well so that it's like still a good consistency. Are you using a fork? Yeah. Yeah. Like mashing it a little? Yeah, yes, definitely. And then it'll be easier to push it down and, and make sure everything is when we yeah. have it actual. Do we need to oil the pan at all? Um, I greased this pan a little bit. I did not grease my glass pan. And you can just rub just a little bit of butter on it. You don't need a lot. Um, sometimes, maybe I'll give you, get you a pastry cutter. I really like this, my pastry cutter here. Oh yeah. And that's what, that's what I do in my, when I don't, when I don't, when I'm not in the mood to get out the big food processor and, you know, do the flour, the butter and everything. Can we do um, the sides or just the bottom of the pan? No, just the bottom. You don't need the crust to come up the sides. Okay. So this is what mine looks like. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Let's I just do it. Yeah. So I'm going to put this in the oven. What's the oven at? 350 degrees. And it should bake for about 20, 25 minutes. Depending on your oven, you just want it to lightly turn brown just when it begins to turn brown no more you want to tag team this or you want to do what do it? i do just with my hands even it out. press it down even it out and press it down right you kind of like fir firmly is the yes is the lemon stuff in this or is it supposed to be no. oh you know what? what i forgot to put the lemon zest <laughs> <laughs> In with the flour. Well, can I just, since Wait it's still good and packed down, can I just add mine? Let and me then see. Is that what I do? We can still salvage this. No, yeah. no. The lemon zest goes in the um, the lemon curd stuff. Okay. That's what I okay. figured, yeah. You scared me, Jacob. No, oh, sorry. Push, push it down. Um, she said until it's compact, right? Yeah, because if you don't press it down 
gonna... well enough, then when you cut your cookies, it, it may end up being a little more crumbly and it won't hold together because okay. you, you're not adding an egg to a shortbread cookie. A shortbread cookie is really like a scone, a biscuit or, you know, but you're making it more into a cookie form, but more compact. You know, one thing my grandma used to make all the time, I don't know if you ever made this, was kind of, it, she called it cheesecake pudding. And it was essentially wow. like graham cracker crust at the bottom. And then she used like, you know, pudding. Hey, are you saying hi to, hey, hi to Mimi? <laughs> yeah. Come here, miss. Come here, miss. Oh, you know what? I'm having Ember and Jackson over next week. Oh, I was going to ask if you have baked with them or anything. Yeah, this is my third time of having them over. I tried to do it like I think I started in November, December. Did I have them in January? I'm not sure I had them in January. Maybe it was, maybe it's just twice. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm having them over next week. So we're going to do a craft. Hopefully this will work. But I bought clear contact paper. I'm just going to cut out a square, Izzy. I yeah. cut up all these tissue paper, you know, little squares, and they're just going to put it on the contact paper. Oh, then I lay another contact paper over it and smooth it out. And then I'll cut out a heart shape. And then I'm going to try and get a little piece of paper where they can write their name on it. And it'll say, love Jackson, love Ember. And it's like a sun catcher. So, you know, their mom, you know, Jeremy and Audrey or Zach and Tori can put it up in their window. Nice. That's actually a really great idea. Where'd you find that idea? Sorry, come on, oh, you know, I'm a preschool teacher. Right. And you go online. Someone else did a different version, but someone else gave this example. So I'm hoping that'll work. I've done it um, where you do it in between wax paper because you do it, you know, you put the, the thing on the wax paper and then you iron it. Okay. You know, because you melt the wax in there. Or you could do crayons, but for preschoolers, I thought this would be fun. That's We're going to make a card, and then I got these silicone um, heart-shaped cupcake things. So we're going to make heart-shaped cupcakes, because Ember will have fun with that. Did you say this weekend that's happening? Uh, uh, Wednesday to Thursday. Oh, are you guys going to be around? Uh... <gasps> we could FaceTime them. Yes. We could make the cu cupcakes with them. Yeah. I will try and um, maybe I'll sign up for Zoom because Naveed did this for us. Maybe I'll sign up for Zoom and Zoom it or. Yeah, whatever. And make cupcakes and you guys can be there. Or we could just do FaceTime on the phone too. Yeah, that would be fun. We haven't. Okay, I think this is compact enough. Okay, show show the show everyone. Well, I think because our butter was cold, it has like some spots, like some butter spots. Um, I think it'll be okay. It, it may not be, you know, the, some of your cooking may crumble a little bit, but right. just make sure your butter is soft. Like I said, like you could run your finger through it, Yeah. but it's not liquid. Right. You know, cause that way the butter can incorporate all throughout the flour and then, um, uh, you know, wet all the flour together. So this might end up being a very sweet, I'm, for lack of whatever, like a pie crust. But pie crusts hold together too, so I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so we're gonna make the lemon curd stuff. So what am I doing here? Um, do I have a bowl? I'll use this bowl. Just use this one. We need eight eggs. On the recipe it said leave them out. I'm gonna do eight eggs in one bowl. Usually I do them separately. So in case I get any shells or anything like that, I can get them out easier. In fact, I'm gonna do that. Do what? But I usually, um, you can do it however you want, but I usually crack one egg in a bowl and then dump it in. So in case I get eggshells or the egg is whatever. Idea. Cause you know, remember on the farm, that's how I started doing my eggs because, you know, sometimes the eggs didn't turn out that great. So that's three. Okay. 
We got four. We got five. Six. And if you forget your count, guess what you do? What? Count how many egg yolks you have in there. Oh, yeah. We're at three. Seven. Eight. Oh, yeah, seven, eight. And you just want to use a whisk or a fork, break them all up, and you really mix them up. Dear, I think I got a shell. Okay, well, then you can okay. yeah. Unless you, if you have a whisk, but yeah, just whisk up the eggs. Uh, do you guys have one cup of lemon juice? I've got to do a couple of lemons yet. Yeah, we have a one cup of lemon juice. Okay. okay. I'm going to squeeze. I need a, another lemon or two. Look at this thing. I love it. See, you put it in there and you just squeeze it. Yeah, it's oh, pretty yeah. brilliant. Well, it works great for me because um, I just don't have. Quite a whisk, baby. <laughs> what? He's a good whisker. Yeah, it helps to, you know, whisk well if you need to. And they're a little oily. Okay, I need one more lemon. Oops. Get my coffee out of the way. So you guys got anything, you know, are you, are you doing anything for your birthday, Izzy? Uh, we might be going to the coast, so we'd be coming through there. Yeah, we're going to go. Oh, that's great. I know you love the ocean. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been a long time since I've been there. Um, and so we were thinking about either just camping in the van like old times or maybe getting a hotel. Yeah. And, um, we'll see my brother. And I said, I like my birthday to be simple, usually just by the ocean, good food. Yeah. No, I think that's great. Yeah, he usually gets me like a poetry book and then we read it together that day. Well, um, I also think going to the beach now is more special. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so what we want to do in another bowl, not in the one with the egg, but in another bowl. I do it in my largest bowl. You want to, you want to put the sugar in there. Add in your flour, the four tablespoons of flour. Mix that together. I think we need a lot of sugar. We might have to put that. And then you want to put your lemon zest into the flour. Four tablespoons. Yeah, four tablespoons of flour. and really stir in your lemon zest because your lemon zest is a little wet, so you don't want clumps. So if you see any clumps of lemon zest, just break them up. Okay, four tablespoons of flour. Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in the one cup of lemon juice. So four tablespoons, right? Not four cups of uh, flour, right? Four tablespoons. Yeah. Four tablespoons of flour. 
And then, and then what else? Sugar. And then I added in one cup of lemon juice, okay. but make sure you mix your sugar, lemon zest, and flour first. Okay, sugar. Okay, how much sugar? Uh, sugar was um, three cups. Okay. Because you want to mix your flour, sugar, and lemon zest and make sure it's all evenly mixed in together before you add in your lemon juice and your eggs. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my egg. And the lemon zest, and then we're going to mix it all together. Like she yeah, said. Yeah, mixing your flour, sugar, and lemon zest. Oh, yeah, that's going to be great. And make sure your lemon zest is uh, not in clumps, but really kind of, for lack of words, just kind of dried out and covered in flour and sugar. Okay. Ooh. And when you're done with that, then put in your lemon juice and your eggs, your eight eggs. Okay. So basically you're making a curd or a custard type of thing. Yeah. So this is going to be very wet. I'm not sure if we'll have time to complete this whole thing after baking, but that's why I made one ahead of time. Because when you pull out your uh, cookie crust, you want that to cool down a little bit before you add the curd to it. Okay, lemon juice. Lemon juice. And then I mix it with a fork this time. And I think my crust is almost done. Yeah. Guys got any questions? No, mix in the uh, lemon juice in now. And the eggs. Yeah, the lemon juice and the eggs. At the same time? Yeah. After you stirred your flour, sugar, and zest together, then add in your lemon and your eggs. <laughs> what? I think, we oh, I think you guys are doing great. We're just a little um, lacking in the, we don't have multiple bowls. Hard one work. yeah it's just a matter of supplies once you get older and you develop then you're you're good to go i mean you have you know bowls of every size and everything you well it, it is true you know well especially you know doing things like this and the videos i get every size because no one wants to see you measure everything out and get the carrots chop it up i mean they don't mind a little bit of that that's why i have a lot of it already done Okay, let's show our let's show our mixture. I think our mixture for the it's a bigger oh, bowl. Oh dear! Pour it out. I have a seed in here. What? Is a it's supposed to be pretty liquidy, right? Yes. Yes, that's why. Um, oh my gosh! Seeds? Yeah. What in the world? <laughs> I use the, you know, the squeezer. How can I get lemons in here or seeds in here? I'm glad I checked. So when your crust is done, um, we'll wait and hopefully we'll have enough time and we'll pour that in there. How long is the crust supposed to bake first? Uh, about 20 to 25 minutes. You just want it till it just begins to uh, lightly brown. You don't want to over brown it because that means your crust is too dry. And it's okay. It's All the like, zest comes and um, kind of sits on the top. Yes. Yep. That's okay. But I think ours looks pretty good. I'll, I'll mix it again when we're ready to dump it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yay. You mind us too. Yeah, you're look, you're I'm just amazed. What in the world are seeds doing in here? I think ours didn't. It was just, we don't have that much. Oh, yeah, it's just juice. I'll bring over my finished thing here. Well, after, after you get your crust out, you guys, 
let it cool so that you can at least touch the pan with your hands even yeah. though the bottom may still be warm it's okay then what you want to do is pour over your lemon sugar egg mixture your lemon curd basically and pour that over the crust just gently pour it over the crust and then just carefully um put it in the oven so you're not sloshing it all over the place. Right. And this will probably take about 25 minutes to cook. And what you wanna to do to make sure is that just put a toothpick or a very sharp knife and just poke it down in there. And if most of it is clean, cause it's still gonna be a little wet because this is more of a curd, it's not a dry cookie, um, then it should be done. Okay. So I'm going to have another one because I just need to do that in front of you guys. And, and then we add the powdered sugar once it's all done. Once it cools down, because if you add it when it's still hot, um, it just melts. Oh boy. So yeah. See, look at that. Izzy. It looks amazing. It's good. It's, you know, like Chris said, there's sweetness to it, but it's not, but it's tart too. And oh, let me taste. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Basically, what I think I'm eating a lemon meringue, a lemon pie mm. without the meringue. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So good. Oh, I'm excited. Mm. So good. It smells so good. It smells so flavorful. Well, it just smells fresh and citrusy. Where did Jacob go? He's right here. I just got a text from a coworker. I was checking. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so what are you guys going to do for the rest of the day? Oh yeah, you guys got your photo shoot. Yeah, yeah. Gonna just basically run errands until we do that. Meet her at 3.30. Then okay. probably come home, eat some eat some dinner. And it's probably this stuff. Yeah, we'll probably make eat this for dinner. We made a lot of it. It's good. Well, yeah. see, I mean, even though we made it ahead of time, it's very good warmed up. I mean, you know, just keep your sauce in a pan and you know, just warm it up in there. The only thing I, I tell people with that. I mean, I, you know, read about it as well, is that when you keep the sauce in the pan, just bring it out at least 30 minutes prior to either baking or warming it up or whatever, because it's not good to put a cold pan on a hot oven or stovetop or stuff like that. Okay. Guys, thank you for um, cooking with me in Amy Roloff's little kitchen. Yeah. It was so fun. Thanks for teaching us all you know. Lots of tasty treats for the next couple of days. Well, if not teaching, I, I just like the sharing, the camaraderie, the conversation. You know me. I've always liked that. Yeah, definitely. You know? Well, you know, um, I'll send you that apple bundt cake once I make it again and like the recipe. Oh, yeah. And then, um, but yeah, send me whatever vegetarian dishes you, you can. I'll always struggle with Chris eating vegetarian because he doesn't like a lot of vegetables, but. He loves salads though, loves salads. Yeah, I do a really good like taco salad. It's really yummy. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah, I can send you recipes. Molly and I, cause you know, she and Joel only eat meat uh, once a week or something like that. Or they do veg they do vegan once a week or vegetarian. They, they generally eat meat, I think. She, anyway. said, they, she said they cut, cut down. Yeah, okay. I think Molly, does, you know, she may eat meat like three, Oh, wow. Maybe four times, but three times or something like that. But the rest is usually non-meat. And so she sent us like this falafel recipe that they made. And um, she, I sent her my chili recipe. We exchange recipes quite a bit. So, really? Wait a minute. That we, girl doesn't share with her mom? <laughs> you guys could all do a, a three-way cooking <sighs> thing. That's what we talked about. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to text her and say, you know what? If you ever have any recipes... Feel free to share them with your mom. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, when you when you post this, I'll I'll share it on my Instagram and then tag her and be like, challenge 
Yeah, <laughs> do that. Well, I mean, let's really do the the banana bread because she does it seamlessly as if she's been doing it her all her life. And I guess she has been, but it was really some of the best banana bread I've ever had. Well, and I would love to do the banana bread because I yeah. might tweak mine then, but no, I would love to do the banana bread with her. Yeah. Because I, when it comes to baking, I really pay attention to the recipes that I'm either doing or I've come up with or a version of it. I really pay attention because I don't have the confidence you know, was that a tablespoon? Was that a teaspoon? Was, you know, truffles are really good. You can take Oreo cookies yeah, and crush them all up and then dip them in chocolate and you have like an Oreo truffle. Well, that's what I was going to say. I, I found like dairy, they make dairy free cream cheese. So it was like mm. Oreo cream cheese, you know, crush the Oreos and then it, the, the middle is cream cheese and peanut butter and then dip it in chocolate and freeze it. And it's really good. It's really oh cool. yeah, funny little treat that I make sometimes. No, that's great. Because then you just have one little, and it and it, you know, you get a little taste of sweet, but it's not too much. Just a little. Yeah. Bit. Oh no, I think that's great. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Well, like I said, you guys, um, I'm just gonna let everyone know you can find these recipes that I did with uh, Jacob and Isabel over at AmyRolloffsLittleKitchen.com, or go to my YouTube channel. I would love it if a lot of you went to the YouTube channel and subscribed to it, but it's Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen as well. So you got two places to find the recipes, watch the videos, and not only this recipe, but all of the other recipes that I've done will be over there as well. So, but thank you for joining me. I had so much fun cooking with my son and my daughter-in-law. You know me, Jacob, uh, this was a thrill. I could just sit here all day and have a cup of coffee and chit chat and cook and all that other fun stuff. So thanks guys. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for having us. Thanks Mom. for having us. <laughs> I'll see you soon. And Ben. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully come back soon, please. <laughs>